Yes, everyone, you know what time it is. It's Jack here. I'm going to be giving your Twitter react solo. Dave sadly cannot join me after the uh, Newcastle game. He had some important business to attend to, but this is going to be your Twitter react. So please, if you can for me, smash that like button. We really have appreciated all the support that you have shown us recently over the past week and just in general over the summer and going into the season. It's a really disappointing result. There are a lot of different opinions about that result, and I don't think any one of them are exactly you know wrong or right. I think it's just you know a very divisive time. Being a Spurs fan, it's hard to wrap your head around some of this sort of stuff. So we're going to try to our best to you know give ourselves some humor as well as you know take some you know different opinions on the uh, Spurs Twitter universe. So uh, hopefully you enjoy this episode, and uh, I will see you in the comments if you guys have any thoughts or any opinions about the game. But let's go over to Matters THFC saying Newcastle away is out of the way. It does feel like we've been released from prison. It's been a very long week for Dave and I from the transfer deadline day week to Europa League draw to preparing for this Newcastle away fixture, you know, trying to get the channel started up in the right way when it comes to just a new roller coaster season. And in typical Spurs fashion, it has been a roller coaster season. And I feel pretty flat out at this moment. I'm actually looking forward to some time away from Spurs, you know, a bit of an international break. So hopefully you guys are in a similar mindset, but do look out for plenty of content over the international break. But I am kind of relieved to see that we're not going to be in the same sort of, you know, kind of just really hectic uh, type of nature, really hectic speed that things have had to go at of recent. But yes, it does feel like we have been released finally from uh, the the draws or from the uh, from the prison of Newcastle away. Skywalk FC saying Van de Ven, Richarlis and Lancashire and Solanke all being injured. We've only played two games. It has just been ridiculous with this medical department and just Spurs in general, just so unlucky when it comes to injuries. But also at this point in time, you know, as a Spurs fan, I just feel like, there's got to be something, you know, kind of cursed about that medical department, not even their own incompetency or just, you know, them doing things wrong. It just feels like someone's shin bone or something has been buried, you know, in the medical department, because every single time that we try to get our seasons up, there's always a major injury to a certain player that is really important to uh, the the start of the season and is really important for us trying to get off on the right foot. And we just continue to, you know, tie our hands behind our back and make things even harder for us. But Definitely feel like, you know, we were really missing a Solanke. We were really missing a Richarlison for this game. Could have used any striker of any kind, really. And uh, unfortunately, I thought Kulusevsky actually disappointed uh, to some degree as well. We also have Tottenham Maskey saying, I'm just sick to death of this... <laughs> Old ground to be honest with you i think everybody is feeling like they've been like we saw earlier released from prison uh, finally after that newcastle away fixture and the bln 17 saying away results versus the other teams in the top eight last season under Ange pasta coglu and uh, let me sort of drag that into place for you guys here because he does have you know some points about um, maybe Ange's record you know when it comes to the you know coming up against the typical top six top eight sort of clubs um man city three three draw arsenal two two draw liverpool we've lost four two that was a really embarrassing result aston villa we had that four nil win an epic one last season chelsea two nil loss for uh, newcastle four nil loss and then man united two two six points out of a possible 21 really need to see big improvement in these games next season well, I think we'll see if uh, Ange Postacoglu can improve on some of those results because uh, they're definitely not very kind to him. But you'd also say that those are some kind of fixtures that maybe majority of Spurs fans weren't really expecting a whole lot from. So it is kind of hard to um, you know, be too critical of him, but it's not really a great uh, record either. Micah saying Tottenham have more La Liga goals than Mbappe this season. I've actually been kind of amazed to see that Mbappe has become a meme so quickly, actually, in La Liga. And it's been great to uh, to see it because, to be honest, I'm kind of a big admirer of Mbappe. You know, I think he's a very good player, but he's not really kind of my favorite, to be perfectly honest. And it has been nice to see him getting at least some type of banter of some kind over this um, start of the season. Aunt Billy saying Ange even got the officials getting muscle injuries now, for F's sake. Yeah, they couldn't even keep up with the high line of Ange Ball. The random lino trying to keep up with our high line. Yeah, almost pulled up with the Pedro Neto injury, it looked like. And he just didn't want to really sign himself up for that sort of end to end nature that can uh, come with trying to, you know, be a, an official with a high line. But then again, you know, you have VAR to help you out. And this guy just clearly chickened out quite, quite quickly. Tottenham asking, saying, I'm sure Tottenham Hotspur Football Club, I'm suing Tottenham Hotspur Football Club for mental anguish. I think Dave and I have already done that. So definitely get in line. Billy saying, I know Spurs players hate to see Ange coming at halftime. Well, we definitely came out strong in that second half. Just 
didn't really get what I thought we deserved. I think we deserved at least a point from that, but we just are so, so wasteful in front of goals and ended up being punished yet again. It's just become a similar pattern when, uh, with watching Spurs. Uh, BD saying this has to be one of the most insane head-to-heads I've ever seen, by the way. One game we're smashing them, and then the next we're getting smashed has been ridiculous with this Newcastle away fixture. And also, I guess when they come to our ground, they haven't found it very easy. It's just been blow after blow after blow. This time, it felt like, you know, there was something that we could get out of this game. And still, though, we find ourselves, you know, empty handed after going to Newcastle away. Uh, my granddad, when why haven't Tottenham won at St. James's Park since Nuno was in charge 54 years ago? Well, looks like Nuno knew the secret, but no one else did to the to the Newcastle away problem. Came from the lane saying Tottenham players, the second the away crowd starts making any noise, they do look like, you know, they can sometimes have that sort of vibe that they're in the trenches when it really isn't that bad it was the case against Leicester I think um where we just had our heads drop so so quickly after conceding a goal and even though when we're on top of teams when we look like we are the better team we do look a bit mentally fragile in a lot of situations and that tends to be the case especially after we concede a goal Maddie saying I still love Tottenham Hotspur Football Club even though they hurt me I think we all do Maddie it's just we're trying to not be as hurt as often, or at least this early into the season. Christina saying the only four player that was actually decent and made the most impact. Johnson, um, for me, looked really good in that second half. He actually came out with a lot of energy. I think what's something he's improved on this season is his work rate out of possession. There were a couple of occasions where he really battled with Newcastle to try to win the ball back. At one moment, he really did a very good job of winning the ball high up the pitch and created some good chances for us. And for the most part, it's not really saying very much, but I do think he was probably our best forward, you know, at least front three player on the day. I think he had a better game than Sonny did. I think he had a better game than Odebear. He looked better than Kulusevsky. And it's not, again, really saying very much, but I think Johnson, you know, once again, has perhaps played himself back into the team. I was someone who called for him to be dropped. I don't think he deserved to start that game against Newcastle, but this is kind of the thing with Johnson. The moment that you start, you know, kind of thinking that, you know, people are going to, kind of the writings on the wall for him he seems to he seems to come back strong the kid does have relatively a strong mentality at least when he comes off the bench he does look to be a very different player i say we keep him in this sort of super sub uh mold for now you know let him you know kind of work his way back into the team he played great don't get me wrong but i think we should probably stick with him um you know, probably, uh, you know, coming on off the bench as sort of an impact sub. If we have Solanke available, I might go with Solanke up top, Odebear again out on the wings, and then I'd go with uh, Sonny out on the left. But that's just me personally. And if you guys want to disagree with me, you're certainly welcome to do so in the comments below. Jake saying it's going to get real ugly on here if we lose the North London Derby. I'm really not looking forward to the North London Derby, at least right now after that results. Just a crushing defeat, one where I felt like we deserved a lot more. And I thought kind of this was going to be a game where Spurs could get a lot of momentum, not only the the club or the players, but just this fan base in general. I think we would have really come together had we gotten three points here and we just didn't. We left ourselves hanging and now I think we're all kind of tearing each other apart or just finding it really hard to make sense of a Tottenham Hotspur at the moment. Billy saying, uh, effing love international breaks. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to, to our international break. That's for sure. Patty saying 66% uh, percent possession, 20 shots, six on target, 49 touches in the opposition box. Newcastle still beat us 2-1, and that's definitely become the logo of this early stage of the season. Um, this Ange Postacoglu hands on knees. And uh, Luca THFC reminding us that Spurs won't be playing for the next two weeks. I think we can all celebrate that. We can all take our minds, hopefully, off of Spurs, at least for a little bit. Again, you know, do look out for some good content over the week, especially if you are a member. I think we're going to put out some stuff to, you know, take our minds off of the current season. We're going to do some kind of fun debates, you know, over, you know, best players to ever play in a Tottenham shirt that you would bring back to the Zanj Postacoglu system. Some highlight reactions to some old players as well, you know, for the members. So, um, if you are a member, look out for some great content. And also, if you're considering becoming one, I think now would be the time to do so over this international break because some gr- uh, great content is coming your way. Stefan McGrath saying, Dragashan not trying to keep the line here and playing Murphy on side. Romero is getting the blame, though. Let me know your thoughts on this because for me, Romero, in principle, is doing the right thing. He's trying to catch them all offside. When you are playing that high of a line, you can't really try to track back. You know, you do have to you know, be brave enough to step forwards to see if you can catch them off, especially with the VAR era where, you know, even just marginal offside, you know, will be called and they will check it back. 
you know, in this situation, I just felt like Romero, he didn't have any idea of who the runner was behind him, or at least what we could tell from some of the replays. He didn't seem to have any idea of what was behind him. And so that run just went completely unchecked um, by Romero, as well as by, you know, some of the rest of the defense. So I think maybe a bit of shared blame around here where I think he could have done a better job trying to close off that passing angle, Romero, because he makes it pretty easy for, I think it was Joe Linton to thread it in behind. But also, in theory, he is doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is, you know, catching them in that offside trap. So it's uh, it's hard to judge. So let me know in the comments, please. Um, Destiny Udogi, or at least a Destiny Udogi fan account, saying three games in and Andrew's already been found, you know, hands on knees twice. Prof Spurs saying you're going to want to follow the easiest narrative about this high line but the real story is as always being wasteful with our chances and threatening positions everything else is a distraction well that's prof spurs thought on this i think the high line can be really risky and i do think you're asking for trouble every now and again but there's been the majority of these games where i would put it down more to the wastefulness in front of goal where we should already be two goals three goals up and that's not even just you know out of maybe bias towards, you know, being a Spurs fan or, you know, maybe some of the attacking play that I have been enjoying. I do think, feel like, you know, majority of these games this season, at least in the case of Leicester City and Newcastle, we should be two goals, three goals up, like clear cut chances, like shots that should be challenging the keeper more times when the shot gets blocked, when it just shouldn't be, or even Odebear's chance, you know, that should have just gone in the back of the net. It's an easy, easy tap in, and he just completely miscues it. And then there were some other moments from Sonny, from the likes of even, um, I think Johnson had that one moment where he had that breakaway where he took it all the way to, you know, inside the box, and then just his last few final touches let him down and he tried to cross it when he really should have just gone for a shot on goal. There was that moment where Sonny was bearing down on goals kind of with players around him. He decided to shoot instead of passing it, and it ended up being blocked. There are just so many moments where I think we should just challenge Nick Pope more than we did. Dave Ellis saying you have to look at the squad and think, does a manager, different manager, get more out of it? The answer, unfortunately, is probably yes. Well, you can see the difference between Dave Ellis and Prof Spurs' opinions there. Let me know what you think of it. And BLN17 saying eight outfield Spurs players in the defensive third of the pitch compared to the four Newcastle players. And Barnes is allowed to completely ghost into the box unmarked or unchallenged. How is that even possible? I think two really sloppy goals to concede. One from a throw-in where the entire team is caught off guard, and I'd agree that this run from Harvey Barnes is just completely unseen and completely unchecked, despite all the players that we do have back in this scenario. And then you look at the second goal where it's just a miscommunication across the whole back line. It just feels like a very preventable goal uh, for me, at least, and uh, it's hard to watch. You know, to see Spurs wasting chances up front, but then also not really being fully switched on in the back as well. It's, a, it's definitely a double issue there. Patty Power saying another look at the Dan Byrne own goal. <laughs> this is absolutely great uh, from Patty Power. I think they always have been producing top content uh, in any you know game, and I've been really loving their work of recent. And it was a terrific finish from Dan Byrne. I loved it. Um, Brendan Johnson's shot was saved by um, Nick Pope, but then Dan Byrne finished it off for us. He might have been our best finisher on the day. Simon Yeman saying, we are playing so good. I 100% expect us to lose now. That's been the trend, just wasting chances and then ending up getting punished on the other end. Carly T saying, on a positive note, I thought Radu Dragashin played really well. I think he did too. And I think out of possession, you know, he looked really strong. You know, he's good in the air. He's physical, had some good recovery tackles. And um, I don't really think he put much of a foot wrong in that game. You know, I'd have to watch it back. I'm actually going to try to watch it back so I can get a better sense of maybe the chances that were wasted because I am confident in that. I do feel like we wasted too many chances on the day, but uh, I'd like to maybe take a deeper look at how Dragashin performed uh, in it all. Simon Yumain saying, lesson from this game is the same as versus Leicester. If you play the way we do, you're likely to kill your opponents. But if you don't kill your opponents, how you play is likely going to kill you. I'd agree with that. Chris saying the only player moving in the right direction here is Romero. Lots of people think that Romero's not in the wrong for that goal conceded. So let me know, everyone. Do you think it's the the rest of the back line that's at fault here, all dropping you know back and trying to run with the with the players or with the attackers for Newcastle, keeping them onside, or is it Romero for trying to catch them in the offside trap here? I still feel like though he didn't have any idea of what was going on behind him, and he had no idea that there was a run being made. Then again, you know, he would have probably caught them all offside if they just stayed in line with Romero. Um, THFC AS18 saying, Am I the only Spurs fan who's still calm? Because we weren't even as bad as the last few fixtures here. Definitely an improvement, but that's not saying very much, right? And 
I still feel like we're seeing some of the same problems, you know, this season that we might have saw last season where Spurs are getting punished for not being clinical enough, but then they also do leave themselves open to be punished because of this kind of nature and style of play uh, in the back. Patty Power saying no Champions League football, manager becoming a meme, season in tatters after three games, Arsenal up next, Spurs fans right now, at least that's me right now, I'm just looking forward to this international break. Tottenham Hotspur Football Club, and in case you guys want to look at this tweet from Luca M, I think it's a good one. It's just showing the, the catalog of chances that we ended up wasting. I think that's one of Sonny's that I just mentioned earlier, where he was bearing down on goals and he decided not to play anybody, took it for himself, completely missed it. There were these moments here where we won it really high up the pitch in really good areas, like two-on-ones or two-on-twos or three-on-threes, and didn't make anything of it. This was that Brendan Johnson chance I was just talking about where just think he takes the wrong angle entirely, should be going directly towards goals, make a defender, you know, have to come towards him so that he can square it to somebody else or end up just taking the shot on his own. And I don't think he really does either there. And there are plenty of other chances that we just completely wasted. And Oda Bear certainly was probably the biggest one. And that's just Hasako in the back of the net. Sean THFC saying, if you honestly watched that game and came out with any other feeling, then one of pure belief that we are on the right path, then nothing will ever convince you. Pure domination at a place we've been destroyed, insanely frustrating, but once you recover from the injustice, you'll be happy. Well, fellas, like, you know, we were harshly, um, you know, didn't come out and uh, maybe uh, we're unlucky there, I guess, according to Sean. Uh, Owen THFC saying Vicario should be our Ramsdale, helped in the first season or two of the rebuild. And then once we got to a certain point, look to improve, or once we get to a certain point, look to improve on him. Hot take there. And I think Vicario has come under a lot of criticism randomly. I didn't expect it because he was, in my opinion, one of the best goalkeepers last season and has been the type of goalkeeper that we've been needing for some time. But I'd agree that his distribution, for some strange reason, has dropped off a lot. He's not making the right decisions in possession as much. But like last year, he barely made any mistakes in possession. He was so good under pressure. Whereas this year, he's not been nearly as good. And um, maybe when it comes to making saves or anything, I don't think he's probably done anything wrong. I think he still looked pretty sharp when it comes to making saves. And He's made some improvements, you could argue, from set pieces. He's still not that great or that commanding, but uh, Vicario has been coming under a lot of criticism, and uh, I'm actually a bit surprised to have seen it. And then last, and I guess not least, Billy saying the way we're cooking these, <laughs> the way we're cooking these, the breakaway Newcastle goal is going to hit like cyanide, and it's uh, crazy to see that Spurs fans, you know, we're kind of aware of the fact that we just tend to be this wasteful team that, you know, ends up coming back to haunt us. And uh, Billy saw it coming, I guess, as did many other Spurs fans. But I'm going to leave you guys there. Sorry that this is a solo one. I think Dave just had some important business to attend to after the game. So I tried my best to put this all together, try to get as many tweets out there and just feeling a bit down at the moment. You know, it's a tough, tough result. Felt like we deserved more out of it. Also felt like, you know, it was something that we've seen before in previous games and kind of to, to a degree from last season. So there's a lot to answer. There's a lot to unpack. And we have an international break to, to a degree, take our minds off of things. But we also have a lot of answers or a lot of questions to answer when it comes to Ange Postacoglu, these players, the system, wastefulness, so many different themes and so many different talking points. But really have appreciated all the support that you guys have shown us as well. And um yeah, looking forward to an international break. If you can for us, though, please, we do have a sponsorship this month. As it is with NordVPN. You can use the code nordvpn.com slash flat cap or code is flat cap. And you can get an exclusive deal from us on a NordVPN uh, subscription. And we would really appreciate if you guys are looking for a VPN to use our code because it would help us in, you know, developing or, you know, having more of a long term partnership with them. And you can get everything from, you know, cheaper deals on Peacock. You know, if you're over in the UK and you want to watch more Premier League games for the cheap, no 3 p.m. blackouts, there's plenty of things that. Uh, you can get with it and we would be very appreciative if you guys want to head on over and check out that link and get yourself a nice discount but i'll leave you there everybody come on you spurs in the big end we trust we never stop i'll be seeing you next